<laughs> this, this is Moneyline Mania with Chaz and the crew. Choo, choo. Chaz, what's going on, buddy? All right, so the crew this week has officially become one more. Quinn Boston was born. Wes was going to be here today because, you know, he's off for being a new dad, but the baby's actually coming home. Congrats to them, and hope their baby sleeps. That's all you can do, guys, is when someone has a new baby, I hope it sleeps for them, because we had them that sleeps, and we have them that don't sleeps, and the <laughs> sleeps is better than the don't sleeps. You would hope they sleep well. <laughs> Whatever you do, you know, you could be a professional handicap, you could be a radio guy, it doesn't matter. If your kid ain't sleeping, it's impacting your other aspect of your 24 hours a day. No doubt about it. But did you see our first ever horse race? last week that we gave up. Oh, I didn't see the race. So we hit that. We're going to do the Eddie Reed tomorrow from Del Mar. It's a $250,000 race. I got some baseball stuff to talk about. And of course, Canadian football. I love my Canadian football, but they have a game this Sunday. So start with baseball. By the way, I'm giving you a lot of credit for sparking the Mets offense at the game I was at. Wasn't that cool? Yeah. So I did it again later in the week. I called another score, but I was right on. It was So I called 6-4 Tampa Nice. against Baltimore, and I had the over, so it was 4-3 to three going to the bottom of the night, so I need extra innings. It's the only way I'm going to get the over because it was 8, so as soon as they score that fourth run, if they can tie it, with the over in baseball, you know you're getting that run. You're getting it. It's just a matter of when you get it, you know, right. and now with a guy on second, it's easier to get it. And then they tied it up in the bottom of the ninth, and the final score was 6-4. So the two games that I predicted, the final score, I was wrong. Two games by, like, three runs, but both of them were all cash. And when you guess the final score, Peter, you're not doing it unless it's, you know how in the brackets, right? At the end of the brackets yep. for March Madness. That's mm-hmm. a tiebreaker. Uh-huh. Unless you're doing a tiebreaker. But how many times have you heard me interject and interrupt Hector? If he doesn't give me the score. I know. Because he's used to giving the score, so I'm used to hearing it. And that allows me to see what I'm seeing in the game. But my, in my write-up, I said, hopefully the Tampa Bay Bats will come alive and this game will have fireworks uh, in the late innings. And I got a run in the bottom of the ninth and two runs in the top of the tenth. And that's about as late fireworks as you can get yep. in baseball. So uh-huh. We always do the f- final score picks before we do our NFL picks throughout the year, too. It's harder to get it right, obviously, with football. But I didn't get yeah, one right all much. season. And then I actually picked the Super Bowl score right. There you go. Well, and that, you know what? Picking the Super Bowl score right could win you some money. Uh-huh. Just, you know, one of the 17, 16 games during the 17 weeks. There's a lot of games that weekend. But when you get to those... AFC and NFC Conference Championships, those last three games right. in the Super Bowl. You could find places where you could win money by guessing the right score. There's no doubt about it. So three weeks I've been doing this, you said, without any crew. Third straight well, week, going solo. We're talking about the same thing every week. So if, if Wes was here, I, I would say, hey, Wes, why do you think I'm talking about the same thing every week? He would say, because it's working. Why do you think I'm talking about the same teams every week? Because they're winning. The Yankees, 68 wins. Houston, 66 wins. Dodgers, 67 wins. Mets, 62 wins. Atlanta, 60 wins. This is not rocket science. This is, wow. For some reason, right now, in the last two to three weeks, these five teams are the best teams in baseball, and they're showing it on the diamond by winning by more than one and a half runs. And so what we're doing is that I mentioned the round robins with them. And and I remember we talked about the round robins, and that's really every possible combination you can get. It's kind of like boxing and horse racing, but for sports betting. So what we do, a three, four, five round robin. And it doesn't take much. If three of them win, now we're doing, you got to do run lines, right? If you saw the other day, somebody was minus 425. And we talk about what that means that you got to bet $425 to win $100, and it's just not sustainable. And if you look at the Yankees, we talked about them a lot with you guys. You look at the Dodgers, you look at Houston, all these teams are going to go in funks, and they're going to have two or three games where they're not hitting. They get beat by Kansas City Royals, teams they shouldn't get beat by. But if you have the other team, it's like plus 280, so it's like hitting a parlay, just betting one game. So all of these bets are focusing on the run line. It's, it's simply, it's the Yankees, Houston, Dodgers, Mets, Atlanta. If they all win by one and a half runs, you hit every single bet. There's 16 bets in this. So it's a 3-4-5 round robin. So you get every possible three-teamer combination of the five, every possible four-teamer 
combination of the five. And then, of course, the one five teamer. It's 16 bets. So say you're betting $10. It's going to be 160 bucks. You're betting $100. It's going to be 1600 bucks. As long as three of those teams cover, you're going to get about half of your money back. You'll get about half of your money back. So, again, that's not too bad. If you could lose and get half of your money back, most times you're going to take that. I mean, you, you sure, would you rather win? Hello? <laughs> but it's gambling, guys. It's gambling. So that's what I'm doing for baseball. But I'm telling you, for three weeks now, we're hitting three three teamers constantly, it seems like. And we've had a few of the four teamers. We haven't had a five teamer yet, though. And that's the key because the five teamers are 20 to 1 when the odds are normal. In this bet, it's like 10 to 1. But again, it doesn't take a lot of 10 to 1 plays, right, to make you a lot of money. 10 to 1's a lot of money. So let's look at the Canadian football. Now, we had another situation where on Thursday, I had the winner and Wes didn't. Oh, gaining yes. that ground. Yeah. There you go. Friday night. Last night, I had a situation where I bet the over in the first half and under in the second half, which is a weird way to bet the game, and boom, boom, they both hit, so yeah. that was cool. Sunday night, tomorrow night, there is a game. It is Ottawa at Toronto. Ottawa's winless, 0-6, oh, brutal. So what we're doing is we're going with Toronto, but we're afraid of the points. So here's the thing, this team is winless, they're 0-6, oh, they're going on the road to a Toronto team that's 3-2, and two, and... They're only given five points, and that line seems too low to me. And I always worry when the line seems too low to me. And and some guys will tell you that's exactly what the sports book wants you to think, and it messes with your head. Well, it did. It messed with my head. So I went with the over. I'm taking the over, and then I'm parlaying Toronto and the over and Toronto money line in the over. So as long as it goes over, I'm okay. If it goes under, I lose them all, but you know what? It happens. Yeah, you're going the opposite of Wes's playoff hockey philosophy where he thought those overs were too high and then right, the right, unders. Right, right, right. And, and again, the thing about the Canadian Football League is that there's so many things to t- take into account, but it is a big-ass field. I mean, it's 110 yards. The end zones are 20 yards. It's a big field. So Much wider, the, too, yeah. Yeah, they have 12 people on that field, but it's still a big field, and what happens is uh, you can get some big plays. So, you know, you get big running plays, you get some big pass plays, and that's what we're hoping. Uh, Being that there's 12 men on the field, is there any CFL team, do you know of this, Wes might know this better, that dubs themselves the 13th man, like the Seahawks oh, like, the 12th like man? Yeah. yeah, there probably is. You know, <laughs> people don't realize They've been around for 50 years. This is not, the CFL is not a new thing. It's new to sports betting weekly, but it's not even new to Wes. It's just new to us because the first couple of years he talked about it, we didn't follow it. And then the year we said we're going to start following it. When I say following it, we capture every single point spread, every single result for every single quarter, and we put it into our easy sports data. It allows me to see the handicapping a lot easier. But the fact that pandemic came kind of threw us for a yeah. hiccup so so now the data we have goes all the way back to all of last year which was a short year they only played 14 games this year i think they played 18 but it's just really nice so some of the things that jump out at you when you look at that is teams how they score how they allow so this year if you've got six games you know they're all in six they might only have played three of those games at home right but having the data for last year you can kind of see what did they do last year at home? And those are the kind of things that teams kind of do what they do. And we talk about it all the time. If somebody does something three or four times in a row, you're sitting around waiting for them to do the other thing, I think you're kind of stupid. Right. Whatever. It's a girl cheats on you three or four times, guys. You know what I'm saying? All She's streaks have to end, Chas. <laughs> <laughs> Some baseball for Sunday. Now, this baseball, though, remember, this is not something we're doing based on the pitchers, based on the results. We're just saying this has won us a lot of money. We're going to continue until it starts losing us money. And that is that uh, Yankees, 68 wins. Houston, 66 wins. Dodgers, 67 wins. Mets, 62 wins. Atlanta, 60 wins. They've been the best teams in baseball for at least three weeks now that we've been talking about. And we've cashed a lot of money. It, it, you got to go, though. You really have to take the one and a half. You have to give the runs because it's just crazy. Otherwise, the odds are just too high. And then the very last thing is our horse race. So like mm-hmm. I said last week, we gave you a, the two horses that ran one, two, so you hit the exacta. We always, whenever, this is my philosophy. This is not data. This is just me. 
You know, just like some people have their numbers that they lose at at Mega Millions. My son has numbers he loses at every week. He keeps <laughs> betting them, but he keeps losing on them. Eventually, they're going to come through for him. Oh, come yeah, on. Yeah, I hope so. Well, he's promised a lot of people houses. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. That'll um, do it. The kiss of death. The, exactly. Exactly. So, so I always take the higher odds. The second choice. I always take the second choice. And again, a lot of the stuff that you hear on Moneyline Mania on 103.9 with uh, the Weekend Crunch is simply because it's stuff you got to remind yourself constantly to just, it's the rules of the road. Don't forget, you know, you, certain places you can't turn right on red, you know, but <laughs> the favorites only win one out of three. So I always go with the second choice in this, in that week, it turned out to last Sunday to get us a 70 something dollars for $30. And again, ask yourself, you go somewhere and you give them 30 and they turn around to give you 77. You're probably not out of bar. There's not too many places that'll do that. So this is $85. You're going to have to bet. Now it's really like 8340, but we're going to say $85. So you're betting $85 tomorrow on the ninth race at Del Mar. It's the Eddie Reed. It's a grade two mile and an eighth on the turf. And, again, it's a quarter-million-dollar race. So here's what we're doing. There's six horses in this race. The three, five, six, nine, ten, eleven that we like, that we think could be there at the end. But that's too many horses to box. It'll cost too much money. So we're going to key three on top. And that's what a key means. You're keying these horses. So we're going to go with the three, six, nine. So for $18, we're going to have a $3 exacta box, three, six, nine. I always tell people, if you're going to spend your money at the racetrack, don't spend it evenly. Spend more money on the exactas because they're easier to hit. There's only two of them. The trifecta, tri means three, are three of them. And the superfecta, you got to hit four of them. Well, what do you think is going to be harder? Of course, the four is harder than the three, which is harder than the two. So we do a $3 exacta. That's $18 on the three, six, nine. And then a dollar tri box with three, six, nine for the trifecta. Now, there's no super box because we're only picking three horses on top. So that's $24. We're going to bet $59.40 in the following manner. We're going to do the exacta with the 369 on top. So one of those is going to win, and then all of those second. Three, five, six, nine, ten, eleven. So you would literally say a $1 exacta key wheel, 369 with 3569, 10, 11. You're going to do the same thing for the trifecta, 369 with 3569, 10, 11. Again, that's fifty. That's going to get you thirty dollars for a fifty cent try, and then you're going to do the three, five, six, nine on top of all those six, on top of all those six, and on top of all those six for a ten cent super. Now you're betting a dime. You literally could go to the machine with a dollar. You could bet a dime. The guy at the window will give you ninety cents. There's a ten cent bet. Now you're normally not just betting one of them, but you could. If you think you know the exact order of the four horses as they cross the finish line, in order, you could bet a dime on a race bet. And so you could go to the racetrack on a dollar and bet all ten races. That's pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing. We're going to have the three, six, nine, and as long as they win in any of the three, five, six, nine, ten, or eleven come in either second, third, or fourth, hopefully all of them, we are going to see. And then next Saturday night, Hopefully, we'll be saying two weeks in a row. Any Saratoga ones for this week? I know you are mentioning that a no. lot last and week. and the reason I didn't do Saratoga is simply I am using the Del Mar Daily Racing Forum free race of the day. So they offer that. And I tell people it's a great way to practice with the racing form without having to spend $11 on the racing form. Think about it. You can go to the racetrack for a dollar. If you can get in for free, you don't have to pay to get in. But And you could bet $0.10 cents <laughs> a race if you chose to. But if you want the racing form, it costs 12 bucks here. <laughs> so, yeah. so I go get into a betting event for free. No, that can't be. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you never know. You might have a coupon. Or Whenever that free race is Saratoga, it'll be Saratoga. Whenever that free race is Del Mar, it'll be Del Mar. Occasionally, it's something else. It'll be Monmouth some weeks. Monmouth has hey, some, you Monmouth. know, right in the summer is huge, right? Big races in the summer there. Yeah, we definitely passed that by on the way, and also Saratoga a little bit too. Uh, yeah. On our way, my grandparents had a uh, a resort they used to go to a lot in upstate New York. We always passed yeah. those two spots on the way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, summer racing is, is pretty cool. I enjoy it. And, of course, you know, when you're at Del Mar, it's so beautiful. And it's literally 13 minutes from my door. Wow. So I will leave, get there, 15 minutes, 
hang out by the ocean. I go early bird. There's no other people, just the other betters. It's it's really special. I'm out of there by 11, 1130. I'm back <laughs> home. And then the races start when they start. Yeah, a whole betting cult over there. The horse racing audience, though it's shrinking dramatically, and you've heard me say this before, they are a passionate little group. Yeah. They know each other. They see each other. And they go. But it, what's going to happen here in Southern California, eventually, it's going to be legal. And then it'll be a horse racing and sports betting at the same time.